Hello, sir. Hi. Uh, we have with us Ambassador Chandrasekhar Das Gupta. He is a distinguished fellow uh, from Delhi, mm -hmm. India. Uh, Emeritus. Okay. <laughs> yes, I was. Yeah. So, uh, so we welcome you on the occasion. Thank you. Uh, so we have a few questions for you on this occasion. Firstly, we would like to know from the Earth Summit to the current scenario with regard to a global ecological movement, how would you describe your perspective on this transformative movement of shots towards sustainability? Okay, first let's start with the Earth Summit, um, which is a term used for the uh, Rio Conference of 1992. The official uh, term for that conference was the UN Conference on Development on Development and Environment on Environment and Development. I personally never liked the term Earth Summit, which was used by some people in the uh, in the journalistic world, but also some others associated with organizing the conference. The reason is that when you describe it as an Earth Summit, you are focusing only on the environmental aspect, whereas the development aspect uh, received major attention in the Rio Conference. The Rio Conference was in that sense a great step ahead from the UN Conference on the Environment, which was held in 1972 in Stockholm. That focused exclusively, or almost exclusively, on environment, on the ecological issue. Whereas the 1992 conference brought in the interrelationship, the interdependence between economic development and, uh, and the environment, protecting the environment. Well, since then, I think the concept of sustainable development has been further enriched. Uh, and uh, now, when we talk of sustainable development, we are looking not merely at protection of the environment and economic development, but also questions of social development or social justice. Uh, form part of the picture. Therefore, sustainable development as a concept now rests on three pillars, uh, namely protecting the environment, advancing uh, economic growth and particularly uh, eradicating poverty, and thirdly, the question of social justice, which includes, very importantly, questions of gender equality. So that is the progress that we've made over the years in developing the concept of, uh, of um, sustainable development. Yes. Okay, sir. So like, uh, you have been uh, in various countries around the world. You are yeah. part of various international as well as national organizations. So uh, like, what is your observation uh, for developing countries and developed countries in terms of ecological movements? Well, when the ecological movement first became a major issue in the United Nations, this was in the, uh, in the early 1970s, uh, the focus was on ecology uh, exclusively. Development took a secondary place. Uh, and the reason was that there was a concern that we were running out of uh, essential or vitally important natural resources. Uh, the previous two decades had seen very rapid economic growth in many Western countries. And the result is that there was rapid consumption of commodities like, for example, petroleum. And there were fears that we were running out of mineral resources and other natural resources and that there was a limit to growth, as it were, set by you know, the, our natural resources. Now, um, this was the background against which the 1972 Stockholm Conference was held. But at that time, many developing countries, in particular India, uh, you know, rejected the idea that there were, there, was, there were limits to growth. 
because had we accepted it, it would have meant that there's no hope for us that such resources as there were have largely been taken up by the developed countries and developing countries too bad. You know, there, there were limits to growth and they couldn't really. And Mrs. Gandhi made the point, uh, she was Prime Minister of India at that time, that uh, in point of fact, development produced the resources necessary to protect the environment. And this I think is profoundly true. If you look at the quality of water, the quality of soil in an industrial, advanced industrial country, it is uh, superior actually to the quality of water of the soil in most poor countries. Why? Because poor countries lack the resources to protect the environment and developed countries have these resources. And therefore, economic growth goes hand in hand. It's not the enemy of environmental protection. Rightly conceived, it goes hand in hand with environmental protection. I emphasize rightly conceived, because if you are looking simply at uh, economic growth in terms of you know, utilizing natural resources without taking care of, you know, of, uh, of enhancing, of protecting these resources, then obviously you will end up badly. But uh, the whole idea of sustainable development is how to simultaneously progress economic growth, economic development, poverty eradication in particular, and protection of the environment. That is sustainable development. It is how these two desiderata, along with social justice, can be mutually supportive and should be mutually supportive. Yeah, so keeping balance is very important. Yes. yes. So, Valenka, you are a representative of billions of people from India, the continent, uh, in the international level as well. So, uh, do you feel that India is lacking somewhere in, in like developing uh, process? Like, uh, what is your observation? Like, uh, where we are lacking basically? In what? In terms of like uh, this uh, awareness and all about these things. Like, People are less about, aware about these uh, things that we should preserve uh, like a forest or we should preserve our nature in a scientific way as well. So oh, people are lacking somewhere in India, I believe so. Uh, that is my observation. So uh, we would like to know your observation in that and we would like to know your view, how we can develop this. Well, in the first place, I uh, did in the past, I had in the past, had the honor to represent India in international negotiations, but not the Indian subcontinent, which includes uh, you know, other countries as well. Okay. Yes, I did represent India. Uh, I think in India, we have made a great deal of progress in, um, uh, in the area of sustainable development. But as you rightly said, we still have a long way to go and certainly there is a need not only to enhance public and official uh, awareness of the need for more active, more proactive steps to protect the environment, um, but um, um, uh, you know this is something which should be uh, treated as a, as a priority task. There is certainly a need for greater awareness of these problems, even more so for concerted action. It's not enough simply to be aware of the problem. It's necessary to take active steps to sort out the problems. And this is too important an issue to be left to governments alone. It's something in which the you know, public opinion must play an absolutely essential role uh, in a democracy. And therefore, research institutions, NGOs, the media, all these have an extremely important, a crucially important role to play 
in promoting sustainable development and protecting our environmental resources. Okay. Do you feel Palipara Foundation is doing up to the mark or they are doing well? Well, you know, this is the first time I'm attending a Balipura Foundation okay. uh, event. And I must say it's been an eye-opener. Uh, I, I find it, you know, extremely interesting, the work which they are doing. It's, uh, this visit has given me an opportunity to acquaint myself with the, with the type of work they are doing. And uh, it seems to me that it fits in perfectly with the concept of sustainable development. The term naturenomics, which the foundation has, uh, uh, has created, uh, is a very innovative, uh, a very inventive terminology. And uh, in uh, the work which the foundation has been doing, uh, it has sought to advance not only environmental protection and poverty eradication, also questions of social justice uh, and, um, uh, and gender issues have been addressed in a very meaningful way by the foundation. And so I think it's, um, it's a great act. Okay, thank you. Uh, so like, what is, uh, as you are uh, in the occasion from the morning, so what is your experience in the 7th Eastern Himalayan uh, Nature Normies Forum? today and what is the expectations uh, for, from this uh, forum and from this foundation as well? Any suggestion if you want to give also? Uh, I'm in the process of learning. I've had less than 24 hours sort of, uh, you know, uh, experience of the foundation's work. As I said, I find it tremendously exciting, but I certainly do not regard myself as very deeply informed so far about the work. Uh, I find it fascinating. Uh, I'd certainly like to learn much more about it. And I'm sure that uh, in the course of the next 24 hours, because the conference still has another day to go, uh, I will learn a great deal more about this work. And uh, I do hope it inspires uh, other foundations too to follow in the footsteps of the Alibara Foundation. Uh, thank you. So thank you.